All right, uh, well, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, Jeremy Medeiros and JP Rouge coming to you from Nonsuch Island, Bermuda. And um, we've had quite a bit of activity the last uh, few days and nights. Uh, we believe that the Cahal Cam 1 uh, Atlas chick uh, fledged last night. At least we haven't been able to find him yet. And he fledged off camera out of sight, unfortunately. Now this is Cahal Cam 2. And this is kind of a special day for it because um, not only is it going to receive its name and it's been named by uh, JP's daughter, Sophie, as well. And um, it's going to receive its name and we're, uh, we're going to, I believe, this bird. Let me just double check. I don't think. Yes, this bird is also going to receive its band and a GLS tag um, today as well. So it's going to have all sorts of... Uh, benchmarks happening today. It's uh, considerably younger than the Cahal Cam 1 chick, uh, almost two weeks younger, and you can see it's still very much in the dust bunny um, mode, but you can see this fully developed tail feathers and of course the wing tips, um, you know, that are now down free uh, coming out. The face is also down free. Um, it's still fully down covered on top. Um, so yeah, this, this chick is developing well. We th I think it, it reached its peak weight um, about three days ago when uh, at, right after an adult feeding visit, it, it topped out at about 417 grams. Now, it still feels quite light, but uh, it hasn't been fed for the last two or three nights. So by now, it's probably down in the mid 300s again. And that's totally normal. Um, they will normally um, lose weight for the last uh, couple of weeks before they fledge out the sea because they're just too heavy and fat to fledge before that. They, you know, it's like trying to take off in an overloaded, um, overweight plane. So yeah, he looks good. He's obviously been preening himself. He's got a lot of down stuck in his bill. You can see those wings are really growing now. Nowhere as developed as say the Cahal Cam 1 was. Um, that was, that had grown to a full meter wingspan um, this bird, for, for a small bird like that, that's quite a large wingspan. Um, but I'm going to get him in. It's quite bright out here. And he's obviously a little bit um, uncomfortable with that amount of light intensity. So we're going to put him in his weighing bag. And figure out what sort of weight he's at right now. Yeah, it's still pretty heavy. Yeah, just as I thought, you know, let's see, 360, 70, 378, so that'll be 358 grams. Yeah, so that's very typical, and they've been really stuffed like that. Um, let's see, 358 grams. When they've been stuffed like that, when and then they're not fed for a few nights... Um, they lose quite a bit of weight, you know, up to 20 grams or so a night if they're not fed. Okay, now next order of business is to measure the wing cord. And I believe on Monday it was at about 199 millimeters. Now normally I, I can fit an identification band anytime they reach more than 190 and this year I've been putting these GLS tracking tags on their legs and I can do that anytime they're more than 210 and this one is in fact is 212 grams so in three days um, it's it's uh, increased 13 millimeters let's see so 212 millimeters great so wing cord Okay, now you know what the plumage is already. The plumage is face, wings, and tail are now down free. So it still has a, about almost two weeks of development to go. So at least we're going to be able to enjoy this chick for a little bit longer. So what I'm going to do next is put on its permanent identification band. And as I've said many times before, um, this is made from a special corrosion-resistant alloy called Inkaloy. 
uh, which is a, a sort of alloy of nickel and chromium and aluminium and these things are completely corrosion resistant and are good for the you know 40 to 50 year lifespan of long-lived seabirds like the Cajal. So the band number is E0843. So that's incredible. I've banded already almost four, well, 43 chicks so far this year. So let's see. E0843. 43 down and about uh, 34 to go, I think it is. So we're more than halfway there. So how have you done that? He's turned himself around. Okay, so because it's a known age bird, um, I know what year it fledged, from what nest, from what island. I knew who the parents are and everything. Uh, those are the birds I banned on the left leg. So if it's an unknown age bird, like a bird I capture as an adult, we don't really know um, how old it is or where it originated from. Those I banned on the right leg. So just fit. I use special pliers, of course, to do it. And then just tighten it up a bit more with the next size down. There's so much down still, it's, it can be hard to see what you're doing okay there we are you can see it's closed it's nice and loose on it and everything no chafing or anything like that okay so let me just write that down you then fit it on left leg band number is e0843 now comes the fun part and like i say this is the first time we've really done that where we're using um global location system um, tags these are tiny little tags that uh you know are only about 1.1 grams each uh, with the little sleeve that attaches it to the leg they're actually just under three grams or about about 2.2 grams more or less and it's just a 3d um a, a digitally um, uh, cut out um, sleeve, plastic sleeve. It's of a special UV resistant, um, long lasting and soft um, plastic that it just opens up, you clip it over the leg and then you attach it with a zip tie and uh, another zip tie, miniature zip tie attaches um, the actual tag to the sleeve. So I'm going to take note. I'm going to, this has all been set up already. So I'm going to clip the one little tag that has the number right here. Okay, and just make sure, ah, okay. So you have to make very, be very careful that it is oriented because there's, it's got an angle to it. And what you want it is at such an angle so that it's not going to catch on stuff and uh, possibly hang the bird up in vegetation or seaweed or something. So that's good now. So now this is going to be on the right leg, the other leg. And hopefully this will be quite quick. I don't have my scissors that sometimes I clip some of the down away. And hopefully we can do this quite quickly. So we just open up the little flange like that. This fits right on, slides onto the leg. That's done. Then we bring this around, slide the zip tie through, there we go, tighten it up so that it closes it up, yep, it's centered just perfectly so that there's nothing that can snag again. Then the whole process has taken about three minutes and there we go. And so here it is. There's the attached tag. You can see it's free to move up and down. There's no chafing. We've had these already on adult birds for up to nearly two years. And there was no chafing, no constriction, no, no you know, problems with the legs of the bird at all. The birds hardly know they're on there. When they're walking around, obviously, they can feel it. But when they're flying or swimming, um, it, it's be it becomes just like a wristwatch. You hardly even know it's there. So basically that's it, bird is done. Um, and 
here we go he's got a little bit of nest material stuck because he also got a lot of down all around his bill yeah just took a couple of strands of down out of his nostrils which i don't know about you but that would drive me nuts if that was the case because sometimes i breathe in some of this down it's actively sloughing off the bird now and it gets everywhere so yeah so the bird looks in great shape um it's got its bling for the rest of its life it's got its id band um, bracelet on one leg and a GLS tag. That GLS tag will stay on it for the next three or four years. Uh, when it returns, because we monitor every single one of the potential uh, nesting colonies, we'll retrieve that from the bird. All the daily location fixes archived on the tag uh, we, and it goes into standby mode once it finishes up and then we literally put it into a special reader plug it into a computer, run a program, and it'll throw up a map of where it's been for the last three years of its life. So uh, it, it will give us so much information. We'll be processing it probably for the next decade after that. So I have a nice uh, retirement and post-retirement uh, job to do. I think that'll you know, keep me from driving myself crazy once I <laughs> retire. So um, yeah, it's just in great shape. Um, both of the cow cam chicks are just they have been really well taken care of by the parents. You see, it's very used to being handled. It's very calm. It's more curious than anything else looking around. It's probably a little bit getting a little hot though out in this hot sun today. So I'm gonna put it back in its nest. Now, last but not least, certainly, is the naming. And uh, uh, JP's daughter, um, uh, Sophie, has uh, come up with a name for our Kahal Cam 2 trick. And the name is Totoro, T-O-T-O-R-O, -O, Totoro. And it's from, uh, it's from a character, I think, in Japanese anime, um, which is a really interesting name. We've never had, we've had Aikurangi, which is named after a mountain in the Cook Islands and such. Uh, we've had all sorts of uh, different names. Atlas is the name of the other, the Kahal Cam one chick that fledged last night. Uh, that was named by my daughter. So we have a really neat range of uh, names for this year's um, cohort of um, Nonsuch Kahal chicks, and of which there's 16, a new record this year. Probably in the next uh, five or six days, this uh, chick as well, once it loses quite a bit more of its down on its back, will also be ready to start to come out and exercise at night, which it'll do for four or five nights and before it heads out to sea, not to be seen again for the next three to four years. Okay. So Totoro, here we go. Get you back into your nice cool nest. There, fantastic. So um, yeah, we're in the final stage now of our 2022 Kahal nesting season. Uh, we've had most likely two and possibly three chicks that have already fledged out to sea out of 16 that we have on none such. We have a total number on all nesting islands of 77, which is a new record number. Um, so things are looking really good for the uh, continuing recovery of Bermuda's nationally, uh, national bird, our critically endangered Kahal. So uh, from Jeremy and JP out on Nunsuch Island, Bermuda, everybody have a great day and have a great afternoon. All the best.